All right. Hey, everybody, and welcome to my presentation. My name is Dave Kemp, and uh, I'm going to be talking about hearables and how they uh, sort of intersect with voice technology. Um, so I am with Oak Tree Products. That's the name of our company. Um, we are a distributor of clinical supplies and assistive listening devices to the hearing healthcare professional. So think, um, you know, audiologists, ENT doctors, anybody that dispenses hearing aids tends to buy a lot of their goods from Oak Tree. And so therefore, we kind of sit at this unique sort of position within our industry where we are uh, constantly working with all the different vendors in the industry, all the manufacturers, but also all the professionals who are the ones that are um, you know, dispensing these devices to the end user, to the hearing loss community. And I've joined Oak Tree in 2016, and I kind of made it my mission to help to bridge some of the knowledge gap between the world of technology and the hearing aid industry. And the thing is, the hearing aid industry is actually really high tech because hearing aids are like the most sophisticated type of wearable out there. So I launched my blog, Future Ear, in 2017. And this is a blog that I've been writing, uh, you know, different stories on all the different use cases that today's hearing aids can support and some of the future use cases that I believe they'll be able to support here in the not too distant future. And that led me to the voice community and the voice technology space because I realized that voice assistance will be a hugely integral part of the future of hearing aids. I believe hearing aids will play home to the voice assistant and that folks with uh, hearing loss that wear hearing aids and consumer hearable devices, think AirPods, um, will be using voice as sort of a UI and voice assistants will even sort of act as uh, the operating system, if you will. And so I have a podcast now where I've been doing lots of interviews, both with people within my industry, people in the voice space, and then people in all these different peripheral areas that I've been covering. So to get started here, um, let's actually define what hearables are, right? So if we think about wearables as body-worn computers, you can think hearables are ear-worn computers. So I've just listed some different examples here some of the modern day hearables that are on the market. And if we wanna take it a step further, IDC, the International Data Center, um, they've defined um, hearables as the following things here. And I've highlighted voice assistance because uh, you know obviously this is gonna be a very voice oriented talk, um, but I wanted to just highlight that these are what a research firm that puts out a lot of different data, you know, tracking um, market share and such, this is how they define what an actual curable is. So basically, you know, with regard to uh, voice assistant enabled um, earbuds and over the ear headphones, um, that's gonna be the ones that we're really focusing on today. So to really kind of get an understanding of when the hearables market started to kind of form, um, you need to really recognize that Bluetooth was at the core of it. So when Bluetooth started to really take off, it enabled these truly wireless, sophisticated, intelligent devices to exist. And so it was, you know, in the summer of 2016, when we first saw Bluetooth headphone sales surpass non-Bluetooth headphone sales. Um, which is funny because not long after, uh, Apple made the announcement where they were being courageous um, about removing the headphone jack um, in the launch of the iPhone 7. But in reality, uh, they knew what the trend was looking like, that people were adopting Bluetooth devices and therefore the AirPods were a safe bet that people were probably going to be comfortable with this type of Bluetooth device. And speaking of AirPods, I think AirPods are a really good barometer of the success of this uh, you know, particular niche in the wearables market. AirPods are tremendously uh, successful from a customer satisfaction standpoint. About 98% of AirPods consumers reported that they are either satisfied or very satisfied with their devices. This was for the first generation AirPods, so I would imagine that for AirPods Pro, it's probably as high, if not even higher. Um, Looking at some of the numbers, I think it's important to point out just how massive the growth is right now within this space. So if you look at some of these numbers here, you can see, you know, the year over year quarterly market share trends. Um, you know, Apple in one quarter alone sold 15.9 million devices um, in the, to you know, amongst all of the different uh, manufacturers, about 31.8 million were sold. Uh, just in the second quarter of 2019, so about a year ago. Um, and look at some of these different year-over-year -year growth 
uh, you know, percentages over here. So the total market grew by 250%. So, you know, now that you're starting to notice when you're walking through an airport, walking through a busy train terminal, um, or at least pre-COVID, you know, you're seeing people that are all wearing earbuds today. And, and so these numbers reflect what you're probably seeing in real life, which is that everybody is seemingly shifting to Bluetooth devices and, and more or less hearable devices um, because a lot of these have the criteria to match, uh, you know, what constitutes a hearable. And so this has been um, something that I've been thinking a lot about for a while now. Um, going back to uh, 2017, um, I wrote a post here uh, called A Journey to the Center of the Ear. And really the whole idea was, as you can kind of see, I have these little cartoons representing each voice assistant. Um, I thought that, you know, wouldn't it eventually make sense as we become more dependent on our voice assistants and uh, you, you kind of go back to like what Brett Kinsella always says at VoiceBot, how... Um, you know, smart speakers are kind of like training wheels and how you get comfortable with using uh, the device and using voice as a modality. And then eventually what happens is you start to become more and more dependent on them. And I thought, well, at a certain point, would you get so dependent that you would actually want it on your person at all times? And because I'm in the hearing aid industry, I thought, well, what better of a device than a hearing aid, right? Or AirPods, um, these devices as your main access point to your voice assistant. Um, and so what's really exciting for me personally is that, you know, across the last uh, about a year and a half, we've just started to really see this materialize. So you go back to March 8th of 2019, Samsung launches its Galaxy Buds, which obviously play host to Bixby. Um, they've actually done a really surprising, uh, a good job. Um, they've captured 10% of the hearables market share in less than a year. Um, so, you know, kind of went from nothing to 10%. A large part of that was aided by the Galaxy S10 launch, which included a pair of these. Um, but I do think that Galaxy Buds are one of the most formidable foes uh, to AirPods out there. And I'm really excited to see what comes from Samsung over the years. Amazon Echo Buds are at their infancy, um, but I think it's really important that, you know, Amazon does have hardware, you know, uh, beyond just the smart speakers. We're now starting to see different wearable devices. They introduced a ring um, and they've also introduced the Echo Buds. And I think that these are going to be really interesting to see how they evolve as Alexa matures. Um, I think there's going to be some really interesting use cases that are very Alexa specific. Um, not long after, you had actually a day after, uh, this, or the same day, I think it was October 30th for both, um, you had Apple launch Apple AirPods Pro. And these are my main um, uh, headphones that I use, my main hearables, um, they're really, really good. I mean, they have active noise cancellation built in. Um, they're pretty much sweat and water resistant uh, for the most part. And they have the H1 chip. And the H1 chip is really significant because it, it really indicates that um, Apple has deviated its chips manufacturing from where before it was just, uh, you know, for um, the W1 chip and the W series chip, which powered all of the wearables, they actually delineated one specific type of chip uh, called the H1 chip specific to um, AirPods. So AirPods have their own dedicated chip within Apple, which I think is a pretty telling sign that uh, Apple has some really large ambitions for AirPods if they've dedicated its own chip to them. Um, not to be outdone, uh, Google Pixel Buds are interesting. Um, the first version had a lot of flaws with them. I've heard some people really did like them though, um, but I know from a hardware standpoint, they had some flaws. They also had a, a string that tethered the two, so they weren't quite truly wireless devices, um, but their second generation buds seem to be a lot better. And I've been on the record for saying that I think that the biggest challenge to AirPods not, won't necessarily be Pixel Buds, but I think it's going to be a Google Assistant oriented type of hearable. And the reason I believe that is that Google Assistant is just such a sophisticated type of voice assistant, and I think it's increasingly growing its gap amongst some of its competition. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see some of the different maybe third-party devices that integrate Google Assistant very tightly into them um, and see what that sort of eventually looks like as you have a true, you know, voice assistant at the caliber of Google Assistant in your ear at all times. Um, and then another really interesting one is Microsoft Surface Buds. These came out just last month. And what I find interesting about Cortana and, and about Microsoft uh, 
surface buds is that they're really uh, looking at these as like an enterprise tool and using them um, as a productivity layer. And so I think that this idea where you might actually own a pair of AirPods as your all-purpose hearable, but then when you're in the office, there might actually be a lot of use cases where you would find Surface Buds quite compelling in a particular work environment if it's super, super integrated into the broader Microsoft suite. So I would definitely keep an eye on what Microsoft does with, it, with its Surface uh, earbuds. Um, not you know to neglect the third-party market. There's a lot of really cool third-party devices out there. Um, I mean, I've just listed a few here: uh, Nuhera IQ Buds 2 Max. Um, you know, what's really interesting about these is they're targeting the hearing amplification market, and they're doing it through some really sophisticated ways. They use this Ear ID Match, which you basically take a hearing test through an app, and then it will calibrate the device to your actual hearing profile. Everybody has a different ear ID, a different ear print, if you will, um, and therefore you can customize both from an ambient standpoint so it functions sort of like a hearing aid would, um, but also some of the sound that comes through digitally as well. Um, Jabra Elite 75T, these are really, really cool too. Um, all of these that I have listed here are compatible with at least two or more voice assistants, and uh, I think it's interesting to see like kind of the different specialty factors that each one's honing in on. You know, if you're a huge fitness nut, you might be compelled to use the Jabra Elite 75T. If you might have a bit of a hearing loss, Nihara's IQ Bud 2 Max might be really good. Bose, if you travel a whole lot and you like the over-the-ear headphones and you want high quality noise cancellation, but you do want that um, access to a voice assistant, that might be a really good option for you. So what we're seeing is we're kind of seeing like a standardization of voice assistant compatibility, I think, across the market. And then at the same time, you're seeing specialization kind of around the hardware, you know, looking at some of the different specialty type things that you can do based on the emphasis that the manufacturer places on some of the different hardware specs. Um, for me personally, like I said, being in the hearing aid industry, I'm very focused on how this all comes about into the, uh, the world of hearing aids. And what's really exciting is that we're actually starting to really see this in the hearing aid market. There are all kinds of different integrations all the way down at the mobile accessory kit level so that developers can actually build these in, um, you know, whether it be integrated into the hardware itself. Uh, some hearing aids on the market have tap access where you just press a button. Um, others will be able to use the microphone on the hearing aid, um, which will wake up the device in your pocket. Um, I have a, a clip here that I'll show you from uh, my buddy Andy Bellavia using it that way. Um, but ultimately, I think this just shows that we're kind of getting to the point where we're having voice assistant access in just about any hearable device. Oh, so here we are, voice first hearables are here. I think it's safe to say that now. I mean, it, they've been now on the market for about a year and a half. Uh, some quite a bit longer before that. But like I said, the standardization, I think, is what is worth really pointing out. And this is now where the fun stuff really begins to happen, I think, because now we can start to really combine all of the unique things that create, you know, that, that um, entail a, a hearable combined with a voice assistant, you know, in ways that aren't necessarily uh, as conducive with something like a stationary smart speaker. And finally, before I move on to the next portion, I just want to kind of give you a little bit more of a glimpse into how big the hearables market is really projected to be. Um, you can just see that the millions of pairs of devices is creeping up uh, to 150 million devices now. I actually think it's going to far exceed that this year because I think that with everybody working from home, along with having a good solid video camera, a good microphone, I think earbuds are another really important thing to have. And I think that it's just like, well, I think I probably need to get those AirPods or those, uh, any of the third-party manufactured devices or Pixel Buds, whatever it might be. I just think these things are making more and more sense as time goes on. So what comes next, right? I think that's the fun question that we always wonder. And for me, one of the things that I've been thinking a lot about is this whole idea of combining something that's really unique with hearables and something that's, you know, way a way in which that would play into a voice assistant. And for me, I think that you know, particularly in light of COVID, um, I think biometric sensors have the uh, potential to completely transform the way that we think about um, wearable devices, broadly speaking, right? You think about, um, you know, Fitbits, they started out as a step tracker. Now what they're kind of graduating into are maybe even looking like things that are illness trackers, right? Like sickness trackers, where they can detect anomalies in your health data 
uh, days, maybe even weeks before you're showing symptoms, just based on some of the different metrics and the anomalies in those metrics that are being benchmarked against the longitudinal data set that you're constantly adding to and logging every single day that you're wearing something like an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, or you're wearing something in your ears that are outfitted with the same type of biometric sensors. And that's what's really cool is that in the last year and a half, we've actually seen some pretty landmark moments with regard to biometric sensor integration into hearables. Um, for example, we saw the first receiver in the canal hearing aid, which is it's the most popular type of hearing aid, and it's also one of the smallest wearable devices out there. We saw one of these be fit with a biometric sensor on it just last year. So think about this, over the course of the next three to five years, in the same way that we've kind of seen a standardization of the voice assistant compatibility and integration in hearable devices, I think what we're also going to see is a standardization of biometric sensors into these devices as well. We can see different use cases such as fitness tracking in the same way, again, like a Fitbit would do. Um, what's cool is fall detection might be a really helpful one. You think about older adults that are very prone to falls, and falls can be quite deadly. Um, because they haven't, they're not able to alert anyone to the fact that they've fallen down. Um, maybe they've broken a hip or something like this. Um, you can basically build like a life alert type functionality into today's hearing aids or earbuds um, so that you could detect those types of things. Heart rate's going to be another really big one and all of the d sort of derivatives of heart rate, such as like heart rate variability, blood oxidization. Um, we're now actually able to capture things like blood pressure. In some of the podcasts that I've done about these topics, what I've really learned is that uh, the way that we're able to gather these new metrics is actually all around the machine learning techniques that are being innovated upon. That's where a lot of the innovation comes from within this space. And you can see that there are more and more metrics that are being added, and therefore these things are becoming more and more sophisticated at detecting, like I said, threats to your health so that you might actually be able to see, okay, I'm getting sick or I'm getting a particular type of disease based on all of these different things that the device is looking out for. And one more point on this, um, because I think some people will say, well, why wouldn't I just record that all on my wrist? Well, the really unique thing about ears, and again, I know a lot about ears because I work in this industry, so I'm being told things all the time about how amazing the ear is from a physiological standpoint. It's a super unique part of the body. First off, it's largely comprised of cartilage, meaning that there's not a lot of bone, and bone is bad for things like um, the optical readouts in laser scatter and things like that. Very, very nerdy technical things, but they do make a big difference. There's actually a lot of different biometrics that you can capture in the ear that you can't really capture on the wrist. For example, your tympanic membrane resides in your ear. This is what radiates your body temperature, right? So it radiates heat, and so you can capture your body temperature. Again, if we're looking at things like where in today's day and age with COVID, if you have to walk in and you got to get your temperature test uh, taken to walk into a store, what if you just had the ability to have it read through your AirPods or through any of your different third-party devices, whatever, that's outfitted with one of these, where it can just show up on your uh, Apple Watch or something like that as just a green check mark saying you're good to go. It doesn't even have to share any of your information or anything. It will just be able to prove that you do not have a fever at that moment. It's also exposed both in and out of your body, so it can capture, it can detect pathogens out in the air, and it can detect things in your own body. And it's actually got a lot of existing use cases today, right? You think about how often you use your earbuds, like I mentioned earlier, for podcasting, you know, for listening to music, whatever it might be, uh, communicating with a voice assistant. Um, there's just a lot of high compliance. You can imagine that people will wear these for long periods of time. And I think we need to think about this transition of hearables that can be used as preventative health tools. We've already seen this with the Apple Watch, right? We've seen like Apple Watch detects a serious heart condition and saves another man's life and all these different things. And this from on the left is what my um, Apple Health looks like without my Apple Watch and on the right is with my Apple Watch. And you can just see that we're getting a more robust data set in our data repositories like Apple Health. Okay, so how does this all kind of tie into voice? And, and sorry, one more point before I get into that. Um, here's the health app, and you can see that it's being integrated into like the broader EMR. And so I'm really excited about this concept that I've termed as Nurse Siri. I worked with Dr. Terry Fisher in the group uh, at HIMSS to write a chapter on this whole idea. And basically the way to boil it down I wrote a chapter for the book Voice in Healthcare uh, on this topic called Nurse Siri. And, and really the whole way to boil this thing down is 
think of your wearable device as a data monitor, right? As a capturing device of your metrics. And so it's constantly logging all this information, logging, 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 storing, storing, storing all this information. But for you and I, we might not really be aware of what is being captured in there. We're thinking like, okay, so what does this information mean? It's great that I'm capturing all this, but I still need to know what this means. Um, that's where I think the voice assistant can come into play and be really, really interesting here. Because think about it for a second. It's not necessarily just Nurse Siri. It could be Coach Siri. It could be Health Nutritionist Siri, where in the example of Nurse Siri, it might actually be using all that data to look, uh, you know, using like machine learning to say, okay, we're detecting some anomalies in your data. We're seeing that you're, you've spiked a fever. Your heart rate's way up uh, compared to where it normally is. Your blood oxidation levels are uh, quite a bit different than what they normally are there's probably something funky going on. We need to get you into a doctor. I might not even be feeling anything yet, but my Siri device or you know, my Alexa device, it doesn't have to be Siri, I just use that as a catch-all, could be alerting you to threats in your health. Same thing with like nutrition. You could be you know, eating um, and just logging it as you go. Hey, Alexa, I just had uh, uh, a pint of, you know, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> and so it can see then from a physiological level, from my wearable data, what that actually did to my body. Like what, how did my body respond to that? Were there huge spikes in glucose levels? I think this is just a really interesting way that the voice assistant can work in, uh, in simpatico with a lot of the data that's being captured by these body worn devices. That's what I think is so unique is that these things are worn on your body all the time and they're collecting information about you that is, you know, maybe hadn't been collected before. You think about like this idea of a longitudinal data set. How often do you, you know, capture your heart rate or your blood pressure if you're not wearing a wearable? Chances are it's probably only going to be those two or three times that you go see a physician each year. Now, if you're wearing a hearing aid, you're wearing a pair of AirPods with these types of sensors in them, you might be wearing them for 7, 10, 15 hours a day, capturing it on the minute every single hour, creating a, a really robust data set, again, that the voice assistant can start to benchmark against and give you actionable insight, give you relevant things that you might be really, um, that you might find really compelling from that. And so ultimately, this is kind of how I view the world of hearing aids, but also the world of consumer hearables too, is that they're multi-use devices and those uses are just growing and growing and growing. I might be primarily wearing a pair of hearing aids or, you know, for hearing augmentation. Like I don't hear well, so I need to amplify the sounds around me. But as a secondary use case, it's also capturing all this information. So it's alerting me to, you know, different threats in my health. I use my voice assistant in there. So I'm constantly communicating with Alexa or Siri or Google Assistant or whatever to control all the apps in my phone, to work with the different data that's being captured from my wearable, you know, from the sensors in there. Um, so that's how I'm viewing all this is that we're going to start to see these really exciting new use cases that have only recently been enabled um, start to kind of work in conjunction with each other. And I think through the combination of some of these different use cases, I'm really excited for all of these different things to come. So that's all I got. I hope that you enjoyed this. This was only a short 25 minute presentation, but I talk a lot about this on my podcast, Future Ear Radio. I would love for you to subscribe, tune in, just let me know what you think. I blog about this stuff all the time. I tweet about it all the time. Um, so if this is up your alley, hearables, voice technology, the combination of the two, biometric data, you know, wearables, all this stuff. I talk about it constantly and I would love to engage with you and hear your thoughts on this space because there's a lot of different nuances and a lot of different ways in which this data can be used uh, and, and these use cases can be used. And I'm always thinking about, you know, what ways can this all kind of work together and I would love to hear from you. So thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. Cheers.